Welcome to this candlestick chart trading video part two. And if you missed part one, feel free to go look at it after you finish this one. They're not in any particular order and you can watch that one second. All right, today we're gonna to talk about a different candlestick pattern and this is not really a traditional candlestick pattern. I just call it a spike top or a spike bottom reversal candlestick pattern. So it's very similar to those of you who are familiar with the traditional Japanese candlesticks to the shooting star or to the hammer. And, but I just create a little more um, leeway around it. It's not quite as strict in my rules. And uh, I'm looking for the logic, the market logic of the pattern. So here's the market logic. First of all, this is essentially what it looks like right there. So that'd be a spike top bar. And the thing that we're looking at here is that the market opens here and then it tests these price levels. So there's bidding, there's asking, there's some buying, there's some selling, but by the time that bar closes, it comes all the way back down here and the bar closes at the same price level it started. Now, for a spike top or spike bottom bar, sometimes they're dojis like this, other times they have narrow real bodies. So it doesn't have to open and close at the exact same place, but it, it does have to open and close near the bottom of the bar. So that is one of the keys, is that first of all, rule one, is it has to both open and close in the bottom 20% of the range of the bar. So essentially the logic here is that the market found value here, it opened where it closed from the last bar. So you generally, traditionally in a shooting star, it'll gap up and they consider it a, a higher probability trade if it gaps up at the open the next day. That happens more on uh, daily charts than with an intraday chart like this. And uh, that may be true, that may um, do it, but again, I'm just um, simplifying candlesticks. So they test all these prices up here and they reject them. In market profile terms, that is called a rejection of value. So these prices from here to here, the market has tested them. And by the end of that bar, during that time frame, said, no, the marketplace has decided that we don't think the market's that valuable. And that therefore is a bearish signal because these prices have been rejected. And so it is considered a bearish pattern and then the market goes down from there. So the market's always trying to establish what is a fair price for whatever market's being traded. So when I talk about the term market logic, that's what I mean. How do markets, people in a bid, uh, bid and offer or an auction setting work? How do they logically work? Now, another thing that is very helpful is if, rule number two, the range of that bar is 20% greater than the range of the last 20 bars. 20% or greater than the range of the last 20 bars. So narrow range bars, um, we don't want those. So for example, over here, we've got a little narrow range bar and that's a spike top bar, but it's not really very significant because from the um, high to the low of the bar, it didn't really cover enough range for it to reject enough price value, enough price levels. So it's really meaningless. It's really just a neutral bar. Anything that is a narrow range bar, I consider to be a neutral bar. Um, another thing is in the context, uh, here we have a spike top bar, and um, but look where it is. It's already down here, and this is the problem. So this is rule three, and rule three is that we want it to be at a cycle high or a cycle low. And in this case, it comes in the middle of a half cycle from the cycle high to the cycle low. And therefore, it's not something that I would trade because it is a bearish bar, it's a bearish signal, but it comes too late in the range of the half cycle. And I wanna catch it at a cycle high or a cycle low. So let's, uh, by the way, if you're interested in my cycle indicator, if you don't have one, you should have one, but if you don't, then um, let me know, send me an email, and I'll be happy to send you information about how to get mine uh, for free. My YouTube uh, friends, they give you my cycle indicator and my tutorial on it for free. So here's just a couple more examples. There's another one with a nice spike high bar. Here's an, and it puts in the cycle high. Uh, spike low bar, 
puts in the cycle low. Again, it's rejected these prices and it's rejected these prices. And therefore, that's what makes it signaling a high, signaling a low. Now, you should notice too that these are just short-term signals. So, and this is true, in my opinion, of all candlestick patterns. Sometimes people ask me, well, how long are these signals good for? And for me, they're good for one half a cycle, which as you can see, is rather short term. That would be a cycle high, cycle low, cycle high, cycle low, cycle high, cycle low. They do not determine trend. So they're short term signals and trend by definition is always a long term signal. There's another one, big one. <laughs> so now we got a real wide range one there. And again, it's rejected, tested all these prices and said, nope, we can't get enough buyers up there. Not enough people buying to get enough traction going. And therefore, what happens? Uh, the market goes down. All right. So if you like this video and you're watching it on YouTube, please click the thumbs up icon and especially leave a comment. I really love hearing your comments. Also, I'm giving away one of my favorite trade strategies. It's called the rubber band trade, and I'm going to give it to you absolutely free. I gave you all the instructions for it. It's a fantastic trade. I still take this trade pretty much every day. It's a real winner. You can learn it in about 26 short minutes. Just get the um, video by clicking on the image in the top left corner, or if you're on a mobile device, click on the little eye with a circle around it in the top right corner of this video. Or if you're not watching this video on YouTube, then I'm sure there's a link below the video or an opt-in form on the side. Once you do that, I will personally email the video to you.